Today I'm going to be giving you guys my thoughts and opinions on the brand new Viking civilization and the new commanders coming soon to Rise of Kingdoms. Man, that's such a cool mug I got here, huh? Guys, before we begin, I know about 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel, so make sure you go down there, click that sub button. I'm sure tons of you guys are watching every video anyway, and you don't even realize that you're not sub. Okay, first let's talk about the Viking civilization. So they actually called it Vikings. Like that is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. It just doesn't feel like it fits at all, but hey, whatever, I, it doesn't matter. But I gotta say these berserker units look really, really cool. Honestly, seeing an entire army of these golden warriors coming at your city is gonna look really intimidating really cool stuff here on the design side as far as the stats go for these troops it looks like the elite berserker tier 5 unit is most similar to francis throwing axemen however francis throwing axemen has slightly more health and slightly less defense but overall very similar in that regard now of course the official rise of kingdom social media accounts did give us the information as to what these stats are for this civilization infantry units are going to get plus five percent attack plus three percent counter attack damage and plus ten percent troop load so right off the bat you can see that vikings are built for hitting cities because there is literally no other reason for troop load like unless you know i mean i guess your your farm accounts right i maybe your farm accounts are going to be vikings that's just that's really boring right that's really if you think about vikings like yeah and then you just think about all the players that are going to be vikings and be farmers it's like that's so silly but um you know if you're going to be hitting cities if that's going to be your role then hey you're going to be able to take 10 percent more load from that city hit that's nice the five percent attack is really boring and lackluster not that interesting Interesting. The three percent counterattack damage is really, really, really interesting. We haven't seen that before, so I wonder how that's going to play out in like rally scenarios. Next, I want to talk about the upcoming, what I would assume to be the Zenith of Power skin, the Island Fortress. This, I, I don't know, this skin doesn't really stand out to me. This looks like a skin that's probably in the game already. Like, if you had shown me this image and been like, hey, did you get this skin? I would have been like, no, I didn't get, like, it just, uh, it looks, you know, I feel like we've got multiple skins that look just like this. But regardless, 5% skill damage, 5% damage to barbarians at a cost of 10% cavalry attack. Decent skin, is that worth fighting for in a Zenith of Power? Probably not, but hey, it is what it is. I could be wrong though. This might not be a Zenith of Power skin. It is legendary, so I don't know. Next, let's talk about how you're going to be able to get your hands on Ragnar Legend of the North Bundle. It's coming soon to Rise of Kingdoms. It looks like you'll probably have two, three weeks, something like that, to get your hands on this bundle. And you're going to be able to unlock Ragnar and get some gems. You're going to get a civilization change here, which is really, really nice. I'm glad that they included that. Plus, you're going to get one star, 50,000 experience. This, honestly, you're just buying this bundle for the for the legendary, right? You're getting the, the gems and the legendary, the civ change, maybe. That's really what you're going to be doing here. And of course, when you do buy this bundle and you summon Ragnar, you're going to get that $5 bundle that pops up. So just consider, you know, you're going to get uh, 10 Ragnar and 10 universals for $15. That's kind of how I'm looking at it. And to me, that's that's a purchase that I'm worth that, that I think is worth it. Um, we're going to talk about Ragnar skills here in just a second. But spoiler alert, he's not that exciting in my opinion. So make sure you stay tuned. But I'm glad they didn't take the same route as Lubu and make it a $20 bundle. I don't think this commander is worth $20 because it's not really a commander that I'll probably be using. All right. Now, the first image that came out on social media was Bjorn Ironside. And we kind of knew this a couple of days ago. He looks like he owns a hipster bar in Brooklyn. Like they sell like coffees, teas, and espressos in the morning. And then like after, after 7 PM, you can get some really, really hippie alcoholic beverages. I don't know. He looks badass. I think he looks cool. Let's talk about his skills here for a minute. He's an infantry conquering and skill-based epic commander. That is nothing crazy, right? Nothing crazy. Active skill called fearless fighter. It says deals direct damage to the target with a damage factor of 500, increasing their skill damage taken by 10% for three seconds. So this is going to provide some really good utility in the open field. Now, keep in mind the image that we're looking at here, assumes that all of these skills are maxed out okay so this is with all the skills at five i think bjorn is going to be used by a lot of free-to-play players in the open field to help support the whales that they're allied with i mean imagine you have a bunch of free-to-play players in the open field making the enemies take more skill damage like that adds a level of teamwork that i think is really important here in the game and the fact that bjorn is probably going to have a use in that way is really really nice his second skill says troops led by this commander gain 15 percent increased attack when attacking cities this skill is not very good also he's an epic commander so you're not going to be hitting cities with him anyway so really just a kind of a useless skill there viking lord is his third skill it says infantry units led by this commander gain 10 percent increased attack and defense this is pretty standard for epic commanders again nothing special here i would have rather it been 10 defense and health of course as you know as an as a 
epic commander that would have been really nice but um again we get attack and defense it's fine right this is again pretty much baseline his fourth skill is called ambush it says normal attacks have a 10 percent chance to deal direct damage to the target with a damage factor of 800 this skill can trigger once every five seconds now this is almost as good as elsid's second skill however his does not have a cap at least not that we can see right in the text so this is going to pop off less frequently than elsid's second skill but in terms of damage factor it is pretty close there which is good right this is good it's a nice single target damage factor and it makes up for the fact that you know his his active skills just really not doing that much uh damage to that target finally his expertise is just buffing that active skill it increases the damage factor by 200 but then it spreads that debuff across three targets in the open field so you're only dealing damage to one target which is a which is a bummer right that that's really not great but you're making three targets take 15 percent increased skill damage which I again I think for an epic commander provides really nice utility out in the open field one last thing to note is that it does say over here how we're going to be able to get this commander he's going to be in the tavern will occasionally be available in the metal store we kind of expected that and then the warriors of the frozen sea event and we talked about this in the leak video so there's going to be an event where you get bjorn for free just by playing that event next let's talk about our boy ragnar this is the legendary commander coming into the game so ragnar is a leadership conquering attack commander again this is pretty much what i what i expected in my last viking video he's essentially a viking julius caesar now let's take a look at this primary skill power of the king troops led by this commander or deal 30% increased damage and take 15% reduced damage for four seconds. So again, this is, this reminds me of Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar's active skill gives some stats and 30% increased damage. Now the 15% damage taken reduction is really interesting, but again, I, I, I just don't know based on the rest of these skills here, if this commander is going to be super viable, super good. And I think Chiskel really hit the, uh, the nail right on the head in his video where he kind of predicted this being a gold key commander. And it does turn out that that is the case. And so that we should kind of have lower expectations for for ragnar again we'll just have to wait and see right i mean his expertise does buff this so he gets 40 percent increased damage and takes 20 percent reduced damage so i mean that's for five seconds that's nice right but if we've seen caesar's performance then we kind of sort of know what to expect from ragnar the difference between ragnar and caesar is that ragnar actually gives you a flat 20 percent of stats so I mean, I guess that's nice, but it's attack. So I don't know. I'd almost rather have the attack and defense buff of Caesar. That's only temporary than just 20% attack. I don't know. His second skill also reduces target healing by 40% for three seconds. It can only trigger once every five seconds. I don't, th 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 this is not, uh, this is not really a debuff that we are, uh, that we are need of as, as players, right? There's plenty of commanders that reduce the healing of a target. Now I know Zenobia is in pretty much every garrison, every flag, every forward, every city uh but this there's just no way that this commander's kit is going to be able to counter Zenobia so I don't really know what the point of that was now the good news is that you can 5511 this commander and you know you're gonna have a a semi maybe decent uh secondary commander to use in the open field as a free-to-play player and there's no other commanders in the tavern that actually reduce healing right so I guess if you're completely free to play and you have no other commanders that do that then I guess here's your here's your option if you really wanted healing effect reduction in the open field Third skill the horns call says troops led by this commander deal 10 percent increased damage when attacking cities so this is again this is a very uh very cookie cutter conquering commander this is uh not really that exciting not really that uh game breaking right his final skill lord of the north says troop capacity is increased by 10 percent when this commander launches a rally rally troops gain 10 percent increased troop capacity so it's basically mehmed's second skill now my recommendation is you know if you want this commander start saving your gold keys but honestly i feel like I I don't know i just feel i'd rather get mulan from the from the gold keys i'd rather get el cid from the gold keys right and so when they put him in the tavern it's gonna lower the chances of getting any individual legendary so again use your gold keys wisely if you're not interested in him at all i would use all your gold keys before he enters the tavern so that we have a higher chance of getting what you want overall my final thoughts are that this is a little bit lackluster right i think vikings are something that players wanted for a long time and they are super cool there's so much lore and mythology behind Vikings Harold is such a good commander and people love to see him in the open field but it just feels like a missed opportunity right I I, I don't know like the, the buffs for Vikings just doesn't it just doesn't seem like it's gonna be something that people are really gonna care about right I don't see many players picking infantry attack over what we already have in the game I don't see players using Ragnar over a bunch of commanders that we already have even in the tavern right I would almost rather a, hit a city with Mehmed than with than with Ragnar and this is a new commander we're supposed to be getting excited about this um, but when you look at his skills it's like you know is this expertise really going to be game breaking i just don't think so if we look at again commanders like caesar 
it just you know it, it is what it is i think bjorn is probably the most exciting thing here because he's going to be accessible to everybody and it does again give free-to-play players uh, an important role in the open field which is applying this debuff to as many uh, enemies in the open field as possible which like i said it's nice i wish he dealed more damage i wish his stats were a little bit different i don't know it just seems like we're so far into the game that if you're going to be adding an epic commander the epic commander has to be better right because the game's been around for so long i'm not interested in an epic that is of equal value to the epics that came out three years ago because we have three years worth of knowledge experience players have been building their accounts for three years it's just i don't know why would you why would you put an epic in the game that doesn't have a, a little bit of power creep because you've had power creep in every legendary since the beginning of the game and then they don't do the same for the epics right like that i i don't know i feel like again this just to me it just feels kind of like a missed opportunity new civilizations are rare for this game and so the fact that we are now getting it and it just it's just it's just not that exciting right it could have been epic but it's just like oh it's a new civ like it's it's not going to change anything i don't know i would love to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below is there some sort of combo that i'm missing here like are these commanders really going to be game breaking i'm really not seeing it what if i did wait a minute i just thought of something what if i did a viking let's play what if i just started a new account as vikings and just and just started at a new server would you guys watch that anyway if you enjoyed the video make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video in front of other rise of kingdoms players by using the youtube algorithm of course subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video and even if you think you're subscribed at least go down there and check i think a lot of you guys probably think you're subbed and you're actually not if you want to support the channel for free you can download rise of kingdoms with my link in the description it's a program called blue stocks it's my favorite way to play rise of kingdoms you can play it on a big screen I've been using blue stocks for literally years even before i played rise of kingdom so it's a program that i actually love but if you find out you don't like it you can always uninstall it later if you want a paid way to support the channel there's merch again link down below all right shameless plugs are over thank you guys so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace